Homeland Response Force is uh, the largest of the uh, series of special task forces in the National Guard that have been built since 1999. Uh, Washington had the first of the civil support teams, uh, which is a 22-person team that goes in to do uh, an on-scene, on-site assessment of literally hundreds of potential uh, lethal threat agents, be they chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear. If they've identified those threat agents, then the challenge becomes to respond without uh, unnecessary loss of life in trying to save others. And so Washington was one of the first states in the nation also to have what's called a SURF-P, a Suburney Emergency Response Force package. Roughly 186 soldiers and airmen, specially trained and equipped to respond. But recognizing that truly catastrophic uh, level suburban events would require even a larger organized force, uh, the Homeland Response Forces were created and I can remember the meeting in which we began talking about this. It was on the second week of uh, General Craig McKinley's tenure as the Chief of the National Guard Bureau. And a couple of other adjutants general and I met with him in a side conference room in the Pentagon and laid out our concept of what was needed to grow into this mission space. And from that meeting, which ran for a couple of hours, uh, he then began to warm to the idea and champion the concept and we pushed it through the Pentagon bureaucracy and finally uh, prevailed in, in making sure it was a National Guard mission rather than a Title X federal mission. And the whole concept is that the Homeland Response Force, which is a task force of Army and Air National Guardsmen with its own organic security force and its own command and control element, uh, could be positioned strategically in 10 states throughout the United States, complemented by 27 surf peas in 27 other states, so that you could have a meaningful response force uh, that could uh, respond within a 250 mile radius of 85% plus of the American population. The first uh, responding law enforcement or firefighter or other public safety person who arrives at a scene uh, assumes command until they relinquish command or they are relieved of command by someone higher up. And so if there were, uh, uh, a, let's say, a, a small nuclear device or a dirty bomb that was detonated in uh, Seattle, which happened to be the scenario for our 2003 uh, national level exercise. Uh, it probably would be someone from the Seattle Fire Department in fairly short order that would be the incident commander. And then no matter what the national impact of that event or what the size or scope of the response, uh, all of the military forces would be responding in support of a civilian incident commander. Uh, in a suburban event, uh, our civil support team or uh, for that matter our our entire Homeland Response Force task force might be the dominant force on the scene. Uh, they might be the only ones and would be the only ones operating in the hot zone itself. But they're still taking their direction from an incident commander who's responsible for the enterprise of response. We were one of the first two Homeland Response Forces certified in the United States and even today we're one of only eight uh, the last two are still to go through their ex between now and August of 2012. Uh, we need to be able to deploy anywhere. 566 soldiers and airmen uh, form the Washington HERF. Homeland Response Force was formed several years ago. It consists of 10 uh, Homeland Response Forces, one in each FEMA region. There are 10 FEMA regions in the nation. Uh, the idea was to fill a gap uh, between uh, local responders and federal forces, Title X uh, military U.S. Armed Forces uh, in the event of a, an emergency, a natural disaster, uh, an attack on the United States involving chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, high yield explosives. The HERF is comprised of three elements. One of the elements is a command and control cell. They provide all the logistic support, administrative support, and operations tracking for all the different missions that are run during a HERF incident. There is a sec security element, they're known as the SECL. The security element is responsible for providing security. They're also providing uh, additional support for any of the other assets associated with the Seaburn uh, enterprise, which would be comprised of both the HERF and the CSTs. And then there's a decontamination element, or the SURF-P. 
The surf piece comprised of three separate elements, a, de a mass decontamination element, a search and extraction element, and then also a medical element. The search and extraction element, they go out and they find people in potential collapsed structures or in areas that are contaminated, and they would then in turn send them to the decontamination cell. The decontamination cell would provide all the cleaning and making sure that they were prepared and decontaminated so that they can move to the medical cell, which would provide the triage and the um, instant life support savings requirements for an individual patient. What's really interesting about our HERF is that of all the 10 HERFs across the country, we have the most Air Guard folks that support our HERF. And it's very interesting and exciting to get to know our Air Guard uh, brethren and um, work with them. This is a joint effort, and as we know, that's where, where we need to be in order to have that synergy between the Air and the Army. They bring a whole different aspect to this, and the, um, it's just been very exciting to see how we get along and how our strengths really complement each other. So the HERF really is a joint effort and uh, very exciting to be here to make sure that we take care of whatever might happen in our state as well as Region 10. The Homeland Response Force is a, a, a tremendous upgrade to the National Guard's responsibility for domestic response. And that's a national mission here to respond to the homeland here in F FEMA Region 10. The partnership between Oregon and Washington has long been established. But now, at the federal level, it's certainly been codified with the Homeland Response Force and integration of Oregon's surf P into the Homeland Response Force with the Washington National Guard. In May, when we had the uh, Washington National Guard down here for the exercise, we had a great opportunity to work together uh, in this unique enterprise that's relatively new on the scene and we responded to a, a series of uh, uh, traumatic events and uh, exercises that uh, notionally occurred here in, uh, in the Oregon uh, Willamette Valley area. The work and the professionalism of the Washington National Guard soldiers was next to none. Uh, they integrated into the exercise seamlessly and we, as a result of the exercise there was a tremendous number of lessons learned and operational efficiencies gained. Or the National Guard in general is, is uniquely positioned to respond to domestic emergencies because uh, the National Guard in each of the respective states has a long history of responding to domestic emergencies. Occasionally these emergencies overwhelm a state's ability to respond, but before we take the step of going to the federal government, what we do is we rely on our, our state partners to come and assist us under what we call EMAC agreements. And we've had agreements between the states for years, so this is nothing that's new between the states. I think now with the, the Washington uh, Homeland Response Force being codified at the national level as a state uh, capacity to respond uh, to domestic emergencies, um, the, it's a natural fit for the states then to uh, develop policies and agreements on how these, these, these forces will come together as a unified command and respond to these emergencies in the most effective way possible.